study on tonight. We pray that you would share this video with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from Psalm 55, verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. The New Living, uh, the New King James Version says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. The New Living Translation reads, Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. You know, God wants us to give our burdens to him. But oftentimes, we continue to bear them ourselves, even when we say we are trusting in him. The writer goes on to say that this is like standing up and holding all of your luggage on a long plane ride instead of trusting the plane attendants to place the luggage under the plane. We need to learn to trust the same power from God that sustains us each day to also carry our cares and our burdens. And we know that God is the one who keeps us each and every day because we cannot keep ourselves. So let us take our burdens to the Lord and leave them all there. Why should we do this? Because we can trust God because he has a track record. What God says he will do, guess what? God will do. So let's take all of our burdens to the Lord and leave those burdens there. Remember how God feeds the little bird? Just like he feeds the bird, he can feed us. Take your burden.
In the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. We thank you for another privilege. Lord, we thank you for another honor. We praise you, Father God, for just being good and being God. We thank you, Lord, that you are all places at the same time. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to bless us in spite of us, in spite of our meanness, in spite, in spite of our cruelties, in spite of our misuse of others. You keep blessing us. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us, Father God, that we will trust you and never doubt. Bless us, Lord, that we will walk with you and that you will be our blessing, our stronghold, the one who holds us up. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for messing up, for, for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, to hear your word on tonight. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we, Father God, will walk with you and that we, Father God, will develop a hearing ear for you. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise, allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. is such an awesome and such a great God. We're here to get, again tonight to uh, participate in our Bible study, and I pray and I hope that each of you are participating in the Bible study. Tonight we are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 is where we are tonight, and we want to make sure that you are a participant in Bible study, and then we can take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. We want to make sure that we take our burdens to him, for he is worthy and he is able to keep us in spite of us, in spite of our mistakes. And many times we are our worst enemies and God is able to bless us in spite of us. First Thessalonians chapter five is where we are tonight. We'll begin with verse number one and we will proceed until we get to a portion of this pericope. This pericope goes all the way to verse number 11. We won't cover all that on tonight, but we, we, we do want to remind you that the Bible is real. The Word of God is real, and God is speaking even in these days, in these times. He's speaking of things that are yet to come, and so we have it on tonight. We're, we're looking at um, the fact that that uh, things are yet to come that have not come yet. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul is writing. He talked about, and we mentioned it on last week, he talked about how we will be caught up in midair. He talked about the dead and Christ rising first. He talked about that we will not precede those who have, who have died in Christ Jesus. He said he didn't want us to be ignorant and this word ignorant, as we said, means to be ill in form or not in form. So the apostle Paul says to us, he doesn't want us to be ignorant concerning those who are asleep, those who died with this lively hope in Jesus Christ. Let me just share with you. Let me just uh, let you know that those who have died believing the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, they are already dead, but they're already with the Lord. Hallelujah. We explained on last week that the Bible calls them as those who have fallen asleep, those who are dead. They talk of, he talks about the Apostle Paul, just as Jesus has spoken several times, about the fact that these have fallen asleep. And the reason why they use the term fallen asleep is because one of these days, God is going to wake us up. Yes. One of these days, those who have gone on with this lively hope of Jesus Christ, believing and trusting in his death, burial, and resurrection, they will wake up one day. Yes. And the Bible goes on to say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 
that they will wake up one day and that they, they will, and Jesus Christ will bring them with him. I explained last week that the body will reconnect with the soul and spirit and they will be whole again. Many have asked the question, well, what about people who are cremated? God is not moved by cremation. Some people say, I don't want to be burned. Well, let me tell you, you won't feel it anyway. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> and some people look at it that way. It's a lot cheaper. But I want to say to you, the same God that created nothing out of nothing can take the body and the soul, the spirit, and put them back together again. Jesus Christ will crack the sky, the voice of the archangel, at the trumpet of God. Jesus Christ will crack the sky. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who remain walking around and living on planet Earth will be caught up with them. And so you will see those who have gone along, gone on, and who are dead in Christ will one day meet those who are alive in Christ. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. The good thing about it is we can die in Christ and wake up in Christ. So their spirit has gone on to be with the Lord. Paul explains in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that, <clears throat> that absent from the body is in the presence of the Lord. So we want, we're looking forward to that day that we can be in the Lord's presence. Therefore, the Christian should not, should not, it should not phase the Christian as a, a loved one has passed away. We, are, we need to know that he or she is in the presence of the Lord if they died in Christ Jesus. And the Bible continues to say, and Paul said, and I re rehearsed with you last week, that we will remain with the Lord. And those of us who will be caught up in the clouds will remain with the Lord from now on. We will be caught up. And then verse 18 says, therefore comfort one another with these words. The apostle Paul says, guarantee each other that these things will come true. Comfort them. If people are worried and concerned, just give them God's word and God's word is able to comfort them. Regardless of what you're going through today, you, got, you need to understand if you trust Jesus Christ as your savior, if you believe that he died and rose again, if you believe that he is the only begotten, only unique, only son of God, then you can be born again, believing that he died, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming soon. He's the same Jesus that died that's sitting on the right hand of the Father right now, and he's the same Jesus that will crack the sky. He left on a cloud. He's coming back on a cloud. And let me just share with you, it won't be in a Lamborghini. <laughs> he's coming back on a cloud. Uh, those, therefore, no vehicle can be prepared for Jesus' arrival, nothing but the cloud, because God and God alone has created, has made the cloud. No man can institute anything for Jesus to ride back in here on. So he left on a cloud. He didn't leave on the latest vehicle. He didn't leave on the latest plane. He left here on a cloud. He's coming back on the cloud. That leads us to, to chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. He began in, in the last pericope of, of chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, by reminding them he doesn't want them to be ignorant. But he points out in verse number one that they are not ignorant. He says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. In other words, you already understand this. This, this is elementary stuff to you. He, he continues this conversation with them. We must understand that when the Bible was written, it was not written in chapters and verses. It was just a long, continual stro stroll. And so in this long, continual stroll, he's continuing the conversation. In other words, he's saying, these things that I just told you in chapter four, I'm telling you that the times and the seasons ought not be concerning to you. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to further explain, 
you have no need that I should write to you. In other words, you're not dumb, you're not ignorant, you're not somebody who don't understand what God is going to do and what God is doing with you now. Verse number two, he says, for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Paul brings together both the coming of Jesus Christ and then he brings together this judgment of God. What he does here is he goes from chapter four to chapter five, and he says, I understand, and I need you to understand that in first Thessalonians chapter five, he said, I understand, and I need you to understand, and I know you understand, in first Thessalonians chapter five, verses one, you're concerned, but don't be concerned. Don't really be concerned about the, the times and the seasons, brethren, and you have no need for me to write these things to you. Then he goes on to say, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Let me just share with you, the thief in the night shows up unannounced. When the thief comes in the night, he doesn't ring the doorbell. He doesn't knock on the door. He doesn't give you a phone call. The thief in the night shows up and he shows up unwelcomed. Mm -hmm. He shows up unannounced. The Bible says that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. The Lord so comes as a thief in the night, verse three, for when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Any woman that's been pregnant and had a baby will let you know sometimes labor pains just sneak up on you. And they hurt. And, and they are devastating. And some women are in labor for 30 hours. These labor pains, not only do they come unannounced, they get more and more intense as time goes. What Paul does here, he warns us, not only when Jesus comes back, when he comes back to judge this world. In chapter four, he talked about Jesus coming back to rapture up the church. In chapter five, he closes out this rapture moment and he goes into the judgment. And he says, when Jesus come back, he's coming back like a thief in the night. He's coming unannounced. And let me just share with you this also. When he comes back to rapture up the church, he's coming unannounced. And when Jesus raptures up the church and when people have gotten comfortable, look what it says. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse number three, for when they say peace and safety, when they are calm, when, when they are, are not worried, when they have peace, when they have safety, when they think that Brinks and ADT has, has sheltered them off from all the things, the thieves that's coming, Jesus will still come as a thief in the night, coming to judge those who have not trusted him. So look at what he says. He says, for, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pain upon a pregnant woman. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back the first time, I want to be on the first flight. When he comes back, he's coming to get the church. He's coming to rapture us out of here. He's coming to take us away. Those who have trusted him has believed in the story, the death, burial, and resurrection, and believing that story is the story that's needed to get you to heaven. Let me just say to you, your good deeds, your missionary work cannot get you to heaven. Regardless of how many homeless men and women you feed, that alone cannot get you to heaven. It's Jesus alone and nothing but Jesus. His death bearing his resurrection prepares us for the flight to heaven.
But look at what he says. He says, when the, the moment comes that men say peace and safety, is at that moment when they think they have arrived, when they think that they have peace, when they think that they have safety, then destruction comes. Destruction comes. And Luke, Luke, Luke addresses this, and when Luke addresses it, he says there will be two men sleeping in the same bed. One will be taken, and the other one shall be left. Luke says there will be, be two women grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and the other one will be left. Can't you see the moment now? When, when, when Jesus comes and he raptures up the church, everybody's not going. But somebody is going. So he says here, when Jesus come back after the church is raptured and he comes to judge this world, he will come when they get to the fact that they have false security. They have peace in their heart, peace in their mind. You know, it's not hard to see that now because people have gotten comfortable with sin. We've gotten so comfortable with sin until it doesn't phase us. And when we get in sin with our friends, we're just so comfortable with it. We just do it just to be doing it. And sometimes we're doing it when we don't, want, we don't really need to. So he says that when people have gotten to a point where they say peace and safety, then destruction will come as a woman going through labor. I'm so glad I'm, a, I'm not a woman. I'm so glad I don't have to go through those pains. I am so glad that I don't even know what it feels like. I don't know what it, it sounds like other than what I've heard. But I'm so glad I don't have to go through birth pains. And some of you tonight saying to me, I know you are glad. When we look at this verse, verse number three, it comes suddenly, it comes unannounced, and it's painful, and the pain increases. It becomes more tense and more intense. And they shall not escape. When Jesus comes back for in judgment, man can't escape it. When Jesus comes back in the midst of judgment, he's coming back to judge this world for their sin. Paul talks about this, and he, he says in verse number four, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day shall overtake you as a thief. Look at what he says now. The, it looks like he's saying that this day is going to overtake you, but look at what he says. He says in verse number four, but you, brethren, are not in darkness so that the day shall overtake you as a thief. In other words, you're in the light. You're not in darkness. Those who are in darkness, this day will overtake them as a thief in the night. It says you got to get it right with God. And the only way to get it right with God is that you trust Jesus as your personal Savior. He says, brethren, because you've trusted him, Brethren, because you uh, are believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, because you are saved, because you are sanctified, because you are set apart, because you are God's child that's been born again, you are not in darkness. And you're not in darkness to the point that this day should overtake you as a thief. This day of the Lord will not overtake you as, as Jesus come as a thief in the night. Continues. Says verse number five. You are all sons of light. He says, he reminds us, we are not children of darkness. But he does say, we are the sons of light. And when you use the word sons of light, you know it's a lowercase son, so you know it's not Jesus. And not only that, it's many sons. 
And the third thing I want to say about that is the fact that not only is it many sons, it's many daughters also. So, so you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We look forward to daylight. Some people would say it like this because the scripture says it like this. Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning light. Weeping may endure for a night. And somebody is asking me, Reverend, how long is the night? Somebody has gotten to a point where their night, their darkness has been going on so long. Let me just say to you, the darkness that Paul points out here is not to be compared to what you're going through. Because when the church has gone on, then those who are left here for the judgment, they're going to be in ultimate darkness. They're going to be really bad off because things will happen that we don't look forward to. He says the moment they say peace and safety, then destruction will come. It says to us tonight, but you are the sons of light. You are the, the sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Verse number five says, we are the sons. We are the daughters. We are the children of light. Light pushes back the darkness. Light gets rid of the darkness. When light shows up, darkness has to flee. We are the sons of light. We are the sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Verse number six. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. It says, don't, don't sleep on the wheel. Don't sleep at the wheel. Don't, don't sleep on the job. What he's saying to us is, stay alert. Stay focused. When we look at our Congress, when we, we look at our presidency, when we look at our government, when we look at our governors and mayors, do you see light or darkness? Do you see day or night? The difference between light and darkness is the same difference between day and night. One cannot exist with the other. Let me tell you, sin, sin is running rampant throughout our world. I mean, sin, sin has, a, has made itself welcome here. Every single newscast, they have breaking news. Every single day, there's an amber alert. Somebody has snatched another child. Somebody has had road raged and somebody has gotten killed or shot. Right. I was looking the other day and I see this couple along with some other bikers riding their bikes and a man decides to use his car as a weapon. Mm -hmm. He decides to, to run over the wife and he decides to run over the man saying that you don't have any business in the street on a bicycle. Well, the cyclist had a gun with him and he shot him. He had to go to the hospital, the motorist. And yes, he was wrong. Cyclists do have a place on the road. Mm -hmm. The best thing for him to have done that day is gone past those cyclists up and gone down the road. Mm -hmm. And I guess he knows that now. Everywhere you go, sin is looking as if it's taken over. But the good news is God is still on the throne. God is not sleep. And it tells us we are not sleep. What he's saying to us is we got to make sure that we stay focused. We have to make sure that we stay alert. We have to make sure that we stay sober. This word sober deals with your mindset and how you process things that are going on around you. A drunk man can't really process things well. 
what he's saying spiritually, we got to stay alert. We have to stay focused because if we don't stay alert and we don't stay focused, this world is going to eat us alive. Yes. The spirit man must do and say and act in a spiritual way. We have to be watchful. We have to be watchful. We have to stay watchful. We have to stay alert. We have to be sober in our thought pattern. We have to make sure that, that we don't blend in with the crowd. It's so easy. It's so easy to do nothing. But see, there's a sin of omission and a sin of commission. The sin of commission means that you do something to make sin happen. You commit a sin. But the sin of of omission is when you just sit around and let sin take over. So both is as deadly as the other and both is as sinful as the other. The Bible says we got to stay alert. We got to stay alert. And then verse seven, it says, for those who sleep, sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night says to us, we need to understand spiritually, we can't get spiritually drunk. And it's so easy to get spiritually drunk from all this stuff that's going on around us. It's enough to make you lose your mind. Yeah, that's right. It's enough to get you to a point where, where you just can't focus anymore. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure we stay sober. Make sure we stay on top of things. Make, make sure we look at things from a, a vivid, godly point of view. We got to look at it out of the eyes of God. The things that's going on around us. He says, we ought not be concerned concerning the times and the seasons. We ought not be concerned concerning the times and the season because we already know when Jesus gets back at the trump of God, we're going to go with him. Yes. We already know that when Jesus gets back, when he comes back at the trump of God, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, we shall also be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Paul puts this thing in action and he puts it in, in clear view of us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 50 through 58, he says, I show, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. And we, we're going to be changed. We're going to be transformed and translated to the other side. And he comes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and tells us, you don't have to worry about that. He, he even says, I've already informed you, so you're no longer ignorant, and don't let the things of this world suck you up. Don't let the things of this world throw you off. Many times we talk to children about pure pressure, but Christians are the one that's really suffering from peer pressure. Well, if you're going to vote that way, I'm going to vote that way. Well, if you're going to buy a car, I'm going to buy a car. If you're going to buy a house, I'm going to buy a house. If you're going to get some money out your bank, I'm going to get some money out my bank. Peer pressure is killing adults. Peer pressure, I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses. We have to get to a point in our lives where we are watchful. We are sober. We react to things of God and not things of people. So he says, we are children of the light. We ought to walk in the light. We, we ought to talk in the light. We ought to act like we got the people. We are God's children. And God's children have peace when they're with God. And when God's children are no longer walking with God, there is no peace in their lives and in their heart. If you want to see a miserable person, you look at a person who is saved and that person is not walking with God. That person is miserable. And the bad thing about it, 
Everybody know they're miserable and they think they're hiding from everybody. People think that what they do in the dark doesn't come to the light. And people also think that they can be arrogant enough to do it in the light and no one do anything about it. At least try to be a good godly example. And if you cannot be a godly example, just make sure that you try to get back with the Lord. Because when you're not walking with God, if you are a Christian and you're not living for the Lord and you, you, you are doing things your way, then you're miserable. You can't tell me anything about it. I know you're miserable because the Holy Spirit is within you. And as the Holy Spirit is within you, then he turns on an alert in you every time, an alarm in you every time you want to do wrong or you go to do wrong. The Holy Spirit speaks to you before you, before it happens. That's not heartburn you, heartburn you feeling. That's the Holy Spirit trying to get your attention. So he says to us, be watchful, be sober. Make sure you understand that you are children of light. He says, don't sleep. He says, make sure you don't sleep. Make sure you discipline yourself and don't act like unbelievers. Christians should be sober, living a disciplined and well-disciplined life. Not only free of drunkenness, not just free from drinking, not just free of, from getting drunk, but they should be alert in the spirit of God. The Christian should put on their faith. The Christian should walk for the Lord. People ought to see that you're in the light and you ought to look to stay in the light. Yeah, that's right. You're not children of darkness. You are children of light. Paul says to them tonight, be alert. Because when judgment starts, when judgment takes place, it says that no one will escape it. So I'm, I'm going to walk in the light. The day of the Lord is coming. And I don't want to be here when the day of the Lord shows up. I want to get out of here in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. So I won't have to hang around in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. If you're listening to me today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You can get to know him right now, today. You can get to know Jesus by trusting this story that over 2,000 years ago, he died for your sins. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He was all the way dead. The Bible says if you can just believe the story, you can be saved right here, right now. Will you join me in prayer and invite Jesus Christ into your life? So you won't have to worry about saying peace and safety. And all of a sudden, destruction ha happens. You ought to try Jesus. You've tried him. You've tried her. You've tried them. And you've even tried it. I recommend Jesus. The one who makes a way out of no way. Try Jesus. The one who makes a difference. Try Jesus. The one who. Who took a tree and died for you. But rose. From the dead. Will you try him today? Just repeat after me and invite him into your life. Say these words, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. 
and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, honestly believing the story that Jesus is the Son of God and out of obedience to God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. We believe that you're born again. We believe that you're saved. We believe that you're going to heaven when you die. My advice to you is get involved in a good Bible teaching church. And I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you're listening to me today, God has unctioned you to hear this word. Please come and join us at the New Beginning Church. You can be a member whether you're local or whether you're global. We welcome you. If you want to join this church, you can do so by inboxing me and let me know you, you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. But Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. And there are others of you who struggle with sin just like I do. I'm the first to admit that every time I would to do good, sin calls my name, sin beckons me. And I want to let you know that we need to understand that sin will have a field day with us if we don't trust Jesus. You may be one of those persons who, who just continue to do, do it your way or do it the devil's way. I recommend that you repent, re renew, rededicate tonight. Let me pray with you. Lord, we ask you to bless us. We ask you to forgive us. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to repent. We come now confessing our sins. We've fallen short. We messed up. Lord, forgive us. God, we ask you, Father God, to not hold these sins against us because we know that you are a loving and true God. We ask you to bless us, Father God, that we will continue to walk with you and be blessed by you. Lord, we want a, a great relationship and a great fellowship with you. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to prick our hearts to follow you. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and determination. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us here for Bible study tonight. <clears throat> thank you for being a part of this service. We appreciate your coming and and being here with us. To our visitors, thank you. To our family members and friends, thank you. To the members of the New Beginning Church, thank you for your continual support. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Join me now in prayer to prepare for, for the offering. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. We worship you. Now, Lord, we come to submit ourselves to giving to the Lord. Bless our gifts. Bless every giver. Bless our hands and our hearts that they will connect spiritually in the name of Jesus, that we will not withhold anything from you because we realize, God, that you withhold no good thing from us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this offering period. Bless those who will give. Bless them to give willingly, not grudgingly, not out of compulsion, but bless them to be cheerful givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you're tithing at the New Beginning Church, you don't have to wait till Sunday. You can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. To our visitors, if you want to give, you can give by way of Zelle, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is found in John chapter 12, verse 32, where Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will, will, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. The idea is, as we lift Jesus, he will draw all men. Therefore, our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. 
Or you can mail in your offering, and you can mail it in to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part. Lord, we thank you for those who are giving, those who will give. We praise you and we worship you. We, we ask you to bless them and keep them in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. In our prayer time, as we close out tonight, we'll be praying for Shirley Bentley, my kinfolk, Shirley Bentley, Walton, and Eloise Johnson, Vivian Azahar, Bernie Bowdry, uh, J.R. and Lula Richard, and also Ann Paul. We'll be lifting these before the Lord tonight and asking the Lord to bless us and, and bless them as we go. Father God, we thank you now. We bless these names that we have called. We ask you to bless them. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with them, heal them, strengthen them, and encourage them. Bless them, Father God, that as they look to Jesus, he will be the author and the finisher of their faith. As they look to Jesus, Father God, we ask you to strengthen them in their hearts. As they look to Jesus, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to make a way out of no way. We pray that you bless each of us in our going, Father God. Bless that no good thing will be held from any of us. And Lord, we ask you to give us peace, to give us safety. Not false, but real peace and real safety. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, in dominion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much. If you're ever in the Houston area, stop by and visit with us at our 1030 a.m. service every Sunday. 10.30 a.m. New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. Again, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for being a part of our service. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.